Hello. In this video, we will take you through the differences between the international standard atmosphere and the real atmosphere and the main consequences of using such a model during operations. The international standard atmosphere is a globally recognized convention and its use in aviation ensures all aircraft use the same atmospheric reference. This standard atmosphere is based on several important criteria. The first hypothesis defines the composition and the nature of air being a perfect gas. The second one assumes gravity does not change with altitude. The third one is about the surface condition at sea level. The air pressure and temperature are assumed to be the same everywhere in the world. The last one defines the vertical temperature profile. There is a constant temperature decrease with height up to the tropopause and above a constant temperature in the stratosphere. The decrease of pressure with height is almost linear. We bear in mind that ISA does not exist in the real atmosphere. It is just a suitable model. These major hypotheses imply an atmosphere without any cloud, with a constant sea level pressure and no wind. In ISA, the poles would be as warm as the equator. And finally, the height of the tropopause would be the same everywhere in the world. Now we will consider the differences between ISA and the real atmosphere. Let's start with pressure. This is the weight of the air above the measuring point. We have three columns of air. ISA, high pressure, low pressure. If we consider the ISA air column, the pressure at sea level is 1013 hectopascal. The 1013 hectopascal isobar is above sea level in the high pressure air column and below sea level in the low pressure one. Let's add more isobars up to 400 hectopascal. In ISA, the distance between the isobars is constant. So if two aircraft follow two different isobars, there will be a constant vertical separation. However, if an aircraft follows a constant isobar, going from high pressure to low pressure, the height above sea level will reduce. Let's now discuss temperature. The real vertical temperature profile is very different from the ISO one shown in red. At a given level, there may be a big difference between the theoretical ISO temperature and the actual one. For example, in this case, for a given day, the real tropopause is lower than the ISO one. Temperature inversions are often found following long and cold clear nights as the sun warms the atmosphere again, but the lower layers remain cold. Imagine for a moment the ice atmosphere around the Earth without solar energy. Because the Earth is a sphere, the quantity of energy received from the sun at the surface is not even. The atmosphere is warmer at the equator and colder at the poles. The equator receives more of the sun's heat and the atmosphere expands. The inverse is true at the poles. The atmosphere is colder, therefore less deep. In the field of aviation, what really matters for us pilots is the air expansion or compression associated with warm or cool air. We observe a greater distance between isobars in warm air when compared with a colder, compressed atmosphere. So as a consequence, the trajectory of an aircraft at low altitude in a cold atmosphere must be carefully considered because terrain separation may be reduced. We recall for the altimeter reading the following saying, hotter higher, colder lower. 